Alright, so I told you guys I would make a video discussing the story behind the green truck's paint job. And uh, here it is. I'm going to go ahead and put some pictures in so you uh, can look at something other than my face for the duration of the video. So, um, it all started this past September, late September. We decided that we needed to uh, get the bed painted on the green truck because it was still red at the time and looked kind of ridiculous and we had the white tailgate so um so we were just going to get that painted and a friend of my dad's knew a guy who did paint out of a small shop and uh, we we were aware of him for a while but we never never approached him but uh we found out he was slow at that time so we went on over there and met him and everything went good you know we were pretty excited the plan at that point was just to have the bed sprayed and uh, the bed and the tailgate and just to get it to match and that was it and I believe we were talking like four hundred dollars is all he wanted to do that so we were good with that and uh, we were gonna go home take some stuff out of the truck and have it ready to bring back the next day and and he could get started on it so we came back the next day we when we go back though we discussed a lot of things that potentially we would do on the truck like changing the fender and the door since we were going to have the paint already and he would be set up for it we talked about a lot of other scenarios things we wanted to do so he kind of had that in his head so we came back the next day and he said that uh, he'd gone home and thought about it and apparently ran some numbers and he came up with a price of $2,500 to do, to replace the front passenger fender, the passenger door, do something, patching the uh, rocker panels on both sides, the cab corners, patch the bottom of the driver door, pull a few dents on the uh, pillar on the back of the cab on the passenger side. Um, there was some rust on the roof where they'd put the old strobe light on and those holes had never been dealt with properly so it was all flaking around there so he was going to take that amber light off and redo the roof there uh, he was going to put a, a 2008 style rear bumper on it since he had to pull that bumper anyways to paint the bed uh, i didn't see any point in putting that old one back and if we had to buy something new might as well go 08 style and uh, kind of upgrade a little bit. So he was confident that he had a source that he'd be able to get the uh, the bumper for relatively cheap as well as that fender and door. So, and I knew that could have been expensive, but he seemed confident that he'd be able to find it. So um, he was going to fix some of the rust on the front bumper and then spray that in a like an undercoating material, bed liner undercoating thing. He was also going to do the bottom, the bottom of the doors, and uh, you know just all the down, the lower sections. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. I think that's all. That's all about it. And uh, so yeah, twenty five hundred bucks. Uh, I had no idea what it should cost. It definitely seemed cheap. My dad and I both thought that. And uh, kind of looked at each other and thought, sure, and what the hell, let's, uh... and then needless to say, spray the whole thing. He was going to paint, repaint the whole truck then at that point. So uh told him to go ahead and do it. And previously he wanted about a week to do the bed. And he explained to us now that it's not going to be a week anymore. It's going to be closer to two weeks. So he said, that's fine. You know, as long as we got it before, as long as we got it before we need to plow, that's the big thing. So that won't be an issue. So, uh... About two weeks had gone by. We're, I think we were just about at the conclusion of those two weeks. And my dad got a phone call from the uh, the woman that he knew um, how we'd gotten in touch with him. And she said that he shot himself in the head. And he was in the hospital. And they didn't know what was going to happen at that time. But she didn't know what state the truck was in or if he was going to be able to finish it. So, you know, we kind of were understanding and we were kind of forced to uh you know just do whatever so 
we uh, gave him some time, and uh, he didn't end up dying. He uh, was in the hospital for a while, eventually got out, and uh, again took some time off, and then a few weeks later he started working again, or was able to work again, and uh, then that just started a long series of, you know, my dad mainly communicated to him through text message, and we would get deadline after deadline that he would set, you know, it'll be done this Wednesday. So we'd, we'd prepare to do that. We'd pull off a job that we were working, prepared to go pick the thing up and uh, get a text from him saying he needs another week. And that happened again and again and again. And um, eventually we were at 10 weeks that it had been gone. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't we didn't really need it. We made do. There was a couple jobs, a tree job that we would have liked to have had it. So we kind of had to go out of our way to use the use the diesel for everything. But we uh, he left some nasty message to my uh, dad, calling us uh, dictators or something. And uh, my dad had mentioned in conversation to this. Uh, woman on Facebook that um, one of the deadlines that the guy had given was for a Thursday or something like that and he mentioned to this woman that um, I'm picking it up Thursday no matter what he's like I don't care if it's done or not this is ridiculous you know it's been 10 weeks so we're getting it Thursday no matter what so that's what set him off so then then these text messages came in I believe the next day just basically pissed off that we were bugging him so much about it and it came out that he was doing a lot of other jobs in, in front of the truck because uh, he bid it too low and wasn't making any money on it so he put it off to the side and just wasn't working on it so things got really really nasty verbally over the phone and um, the guys messed up which I think you could tell that if you try shooting yourself in the head, you're pretty messed up. But anyways, uh, it resulted in us going to pick it up in black primer with uh, the body work done and the uh, basically just not painted. It needed to be painted still. So we went ahead and picked that up and ended up paying him $2,000 for that. So 500 less than we originally agreed. He gave us the paint that he'd already bought and uh, told us to go find somebody else to paint it. So we uh, immediately started trying to find somebody that we knew, hopefully somebody that we were close with or knew personally, but uh, didn't really get anywhere. There was one person in particular that we knew. Um, he was the dad of a guy that played uh, soccer in college with my brother my younger brother and he'd done a very small repair on our white minivan the Ford Freestar um, but other than that we hadn't done anything before so he'd, he'd done that before so we knew he painted he works for a Ford dealer so we called him tried to explain it to him best we could and he uh, he said for a thousand dollars he'd spray the thing on the side in his in his garage so not not a real professional environment, but he'd get it done. So we called about 25 other places, also considered Mako, um, and it was all over the place. I mean, that nobody was any cheaper than that, but um, they didn't want to use the paint that we had already. They wanted to uh, sand it back down and not use the primer that was already on it because they didn't trust that, which is understandable. Um, so we uh, went back and forth and couldn't decide what we were going to do. We ended up bringing it to this guy though from soccer that we knew and uh, also everybody criticized the paint that guy number one had given us saying that that was cheap crap and nobody uses that so we didn't even know if it was going to be enough. I mean there wasn't a whole lot. It was so um, so we dropped it off by this guy and it's cold, you know, it's in the middle of, uh, early, it's early December, I guess now, 
and uh, you know, so not ideal conditions either. You know, we'll see how long this thing lasts. Uh, hopefully, the in a year or so, we don't have the clear coat peeling and all that. But uh, I guess hopefully it holds up. You know, I don't really care how it looks. I just don't need it peeling and fading and all that stuff in a couple years. So, but it was basically set up to fail. So our expectations are kind of low. But probably got what we paid for. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if we paid big money for it and this kind of crap happened, then yeah, we'd be a lot more pissed. But when you're only paying a total of $3,000, this is kind of what you're going to get, I guess. So, uh, brought it by him. He had it for about a week and we went and picked it up. And, uh, yeah, when we first pulled up, the first thing I noticed was the pinstripe on it. I have no idea where that came from. It didn't have a pinstripe originally. I never mentioned it. He never mentioned it. I don't, I don't know where it came from or how he got the idea to do it, but, um, but it's there. So, uh, I guess I'm going to leave it. I think it kind of makes it look older, but whatever. So other than that, you know, it's, it was a pretty shitty job. I mean, now I'll get into the body work from before. It was some crap body work. If you go back in my videos and watch some of the stuff I did on my Jeep with the great stuff foam and pop rivets and thin sheet metal, that's the quality of work this guy did. He uh, just pieced together some metal and covered up the rust. He didn't cut everything out. Um, so that's mainly on the door bottoms and the rockers. The cab corners don't look too bad. I don't know how much rust was actually taken out and how much bond was actually there, but I guess time will show with that. But the door bottoms suck. Um, the uh, He got overspray. He used that, that black undercoating stuff on the bottom of it and got overspray all over the uh, plastic trim inside the cab. I got pictures. I'll, I should be inserting pictures here. I don't know what pictures I'm going to put in yet, but we'll see. So... Um, he got overspray all over it and, you know, didn't clean the glass off and stuff. So it was a real pain in the ass. Um, once we got it back when it was prime, sorry, going back before the paint was done, I took it in and got the tires put on because I'd already had them purchased. Uh, there was a deal for a Black Friday thing. So I went ahead and ordered them and I was waiting, thought we were getting the truck back before then. So I had it lined up for these tires and stuff. So I brought it in like that in the primer had them put the tires on and uh and they put them on backwards with the white lettering in so you might notice in some pictures that the white letters are in and then later on they're out i eventually brought it back and had them reverse it so um then with the paint i don't know if he was short on it or what but um it's difficult having two people do the work you know one guy knows where he stopped with the primer and the other guy doesn't so he didn't, the guy number two didn't get inside the, the gas filler door, so that's still black. Um, the roof is really thin. I got some pictures of that, so that needs to be touched up or something in the future. And um, there was one spot on the tailgate that never got primer. It was still white. I don't know how that happened. And another thing I just couldn't believe was the uh, the area where you'll see in the pictures where there's black overspray. Um, <clears throat> the I cleaned it all off perfectly clean on that interior trim, and the second guy with the paint got green overspray right over the exact same spot. So they must have the same crappy taping methods. So that. That annoyed the crap out of me. Um, and then one of the dumbest things that pissed me off the most, going back again, when we picked it up, when it was in primer from the first guy, he was he was in the process of putting the last emblem back on. I have no idea why the hell he decided to do that. And I don't, it looked like he used hot glue or something and not, or like shoe goo maybe, but it wasn't like double-sided tape like normal. So the two Triton V8 emblems on the front fenders and the F-250 ones closer to the door. So he put those back on and uh, I 
didn't take them off before bringing it for paint. I kind of figured that uh, he would take them off himself. So stupid on my part, I should have just taken them back off. But I didn't know what that would leave, you know, the glue residue or he'd have to reprimer that spot. So I figured either way it was going to be fucked. So left the emblems on and of course this guy painted around them, but in the crappiest way possible. So I'll show you, I got pictures of the bad tape job around that. And uh, they both taped around the roof clearance lights. And um, yeah, there's a there's a couple bad spots. It's a, it's a really it's a really shitty paint job. I was telling people it was a really crappy job, but it looks good just compared to what it was. So um, then I got the bumper. I bought that for under two hundred dollars, shipped on eBay. It was a takeoff, so new basically. Um, Guy number one was pissed off about that too. He said that you know it was going to cost him three hundred dollars to get a two thousand eight bumper, and um, didn't really matter. He you know I figured he had a source that he could get an aftermarket one or something, but so I got that for under two hundred dollars shipped, and I found one that was even cheaper after that. So that's not that big of a deal. So the reason then I guess we'll go into a little more. The reason I'm not working or not able to work uh, the day I put that bumper on was kind of the last normal day that I had. Um, a couple days before that I had flu-like symptoms and um, the day after I put that bumper on I went into the emergency room because I was breathing really hard and my heart rate wouldn't go down and it turned out in the end that I'd had like a flu, a viral infection and it got to my heart and uh, messed my heart up pretty good caused a lot of damage with that normally your heart's uh, the efficiency that it's supposed to pump at is like 55% uh, that's that's normal and I was at below 15% so I didn't have a heart attack or anything but uh, so they from the emergency room I went to the hospital and I spent a week in the hospital uh, and they had me on some medicines to keep the heart rate down and uh, just lots of stuff. Spent a week in the hospital. I've been home now for over three weeks and uh, not quite right. I can't really I can't really do anything that gets my heart rate up. I'm not supposed to anyways. Uh, I can't drive or they, they told me not to drive. Um, so I haven't driven for over a month and uh, yeah so my uh, brother was around and he helped my dad with some of the plowing. Luckily, we haven't had a very strong winter this year, so there hasn't been a whole lot of events. But uh, yeah, I've been inside doing nothing and um, just trying to relax and not think about this. So I've got this automatic defibrillator uh, vest that I gotta wear, and it's supposed to detect if anything anything abnormal happens and give me a shock if I need it so I've been wearing that and they're thinking the recovery could could take as much as three months so just trying to ride that out and uh, hopefully all goes well with that but I believe the medical term was uh, myopericarditis so if you want to look that up if you're curious or maybe some of you've had it before but uh yeah, so it kind of sucks. So I haven't driven the truck much. It's been sitting out there, and we kind of decided that it's best to uh, not expose it to salt if it doesn't need to be. So it hasn't seen salt so far this year, and today is uh, uh, January 22nd. So we'll see where that goes. So anyways, that is the story of the green truck's paint, and... Uh, Go ahead and leave comments in in the comment section. Curious to see what you guys think. Um, I'm gonna try to get some more videos up while I've got the time now. And uh, thanks for watching.